Hi, I thought of today of providing an update on grains and oil seeds. I did a brief overview of uh, the livestock markets on Tuesday. And so let's look at what futures markets are telling us for grains and oil seeds. So if you start off on the right hand side, you're looking at the U.S. corn futures markets and obviously you have to be careful here. Canadian prices are going to be different. You have to account for a number of different factors when it comes to Canadian prices, exchange rate obviously being one of them. But what you're seeing up on in the U.S. futures markets is, is quite indicative of, of trends and overall for commodity prices. And so if you look at a corn, obviously pretty significant demand destruction when it comes to ethanol with confinement measures and the demand for fuel declining so much. Uh, we've seen ethanol production being down 45 percent so far this year. And, and uh, I, I would expect even more plant closures in the U.S., so as such, you know, the demand for corn has been pretty weak and you've seen now prices in the futures markets flirting with that, you know, just slightly above that $3 a bushel. Um, so still quite a bit below what uh, the level uh, price levels were uh, last year. And so it's going to be interesting to see what um, if producers in the U.S. keep seeding intentions as they initially revealed and, and seed lots of corn, which I doubt is going to be the case. Um, if you look at wheat, obviously it's been an up and down market, uh, down first as the at the outset of the crisis. Then there's going to be that there's been a little bit of a rebound when it comes to wheat, as there were reports of the global wheat supply being limited with some export restrictions in some large producing countries, Russia being one of them. But then we've seen, you know, a little bit of a downward movement in wheat recently for the entire month of April, and and I don't think that it's uh, what's going on for corn is is um, is, is not related to what we are seeing for wheat. Obviously, there's going to be less demand for feed wheat with the surplus of corn. And so that's having an impact on the demand overall for wheat. And we've seen some downward pressures. Having said that, you know, you're looking at 2020 numbers uh, that or prices that compare favorably to what prices were in 2019. Briefly looking at oil seeds, you've seen canola is holding up pretty well. Uh, it looks as if, you know, some of the demand shifts that we're seeing from food service towards retail is not having too much of an impact on what processors and crushers need when it comes to canola. Again, uh, it's going to be interesting to look at seeding intentions. The next report of Statistics Canada is a week from today on May 7th. So keep an eye on that and see what uh, production is going to look like for 2020. But so far, we have prices that are higher than what they were in 2019. Obviously, some of some significant distortions then you know, with regards to the actions taken on by China in 2019 around at that time, you know, starting off in March, that led to a decline up until May. And then there's been a, a pretty steady rebound. So if we can hold that, that price line there, I think that's going to be uh, positive for canola. And then uh, soybeans, um, pretty much similar pattern that what we observed in uh, 2019. Having said that, prices in 2019 were not great to, great to, to begin with. And so um, export demand in the U.S. is lagging what we're seeing elsewhere. So it's quite a few question marks around what China is going to ultimately buy from the U.S. Again, keep an eye on U.S. seeding intentions. That's going to be um, a, a pretty uh, interesting story as, as seeding now is, is definitely on the way in the U.S. and is getting uh, started here in Canada. For more, for more information, you can go to our website at fcc.ca slash knowledge.